hello youtube welcome back to my channel so in today's tutorial we are going to go ahead and complete our django inventory management system so in the last tutorial we have been able to build the ability to add products and delete products and also update products so in this tutorial we are going to go ahead and write the functionality for for users to be able to uh, plot the graphs like the graph uh, the plot the graphs that i said are going to plot so we're going to do some data visualization mainly in this tutorial but before we get started let me just start up uh, my development server so you can see where we have reached so far so I'm just going to do an ls and I'm going to do a uh, python3 manage.py and then you're going to run our development server. So now that uh, let's just run our server and then we can check what we have reached so far. And then from there, there are a couple of errors that uh, come, couple of uh, errors that you have done that will solve and then add some uh, bit of messaging information and then we'll build, go on to building the dashboards. So let's just wait for the server to get started. Uh, it's a bit sluggish for now. So now that the server has already started, we can just go uh, in here and then refresh localhost at port 8000 or you can just simply click on this link and then it also take you to localhost at port 8000. So in here you type in your password, my password is just prince and my password is admin 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and then you log in. So if whenever we log in here, we can see we have this, this we have reached so far. So I can click on this and I can see the product information. I can update and delete the different products. Okay. So now uh, there's something about, let me just go back to the main page. I just, I'm just going to log out for now and I can click on login again. So now that I'm logged out of my system, let me just show you something. You see, uh, that if I show you my code base, back to my code base again, you can see, let me just go back to my views.py. In my views.py, uh, what, what you can notice is that we can see that the update functionality does not have the decorator login required, meaning that we can access this page without an update product without actually having to log into the system. Now that's the secu security vulnerability. You don't want that uh, functionality from our application. So now that I'm logged in, I'm just going to show demonstrate this to you. Okay, go inventory and then for slash update and then for slash three again let's go three and you can see i can update a product without having to log in so let's go ahead and this is something that i forgot in the last tutorial so let's go ahead and actually copy this and paste it here in order to solve that issue so i'm just going to paste that uh, over there uh, let me just copy this one more time so so now that we have that pasted over there now a, a person cannot access this page unless they are logged in so if let me try to refresh and it's going to probably redirect me let me see if the server is still running so let's uh the server is still running uh it's just going to reload and then after it reloads we can try this out again so what if you if you try this out again uh, we can't access the update update functionality without being logged in so this will direct us to the login page and if it redirects us to the login page we have to provide in our credentials before we are able to update a given product and that's how i want the functionality of the app to be so go in there and make sure that you have this uh, login required login underscore decorator login required decorator um there okay so now if you let me try to refresh this again you can see I can access that page unless I'm logged in. So let me try to log in and then I'm going to provide in here my password to the phone five and then I'm going to log in. And now this is going to bring me to the page after I've really logged in. So I can only I, I can only access the page when I'm, whenever I'm logged in or else I can access the, the update page whenever I'm not logged in. And that's how we want it to be. So now that we've fixed that vulnerability, let's go ahead and actually uh, do some messaging um, messaging functionality for example if you update a product it doesn't give you any notification to tell the user that the products have been updated so there's something i want to fix so i'll just go ahead and actually import this so i'm going to say from uh from django.contrib i'm going to go ahead and import uh messages okay from django.contrib make sure you import messages and you're going to use messages in a couple of places so if a person um if a person adds a new product you want to send him uh him or her and uh an, a message telling him that telling him or her that the product has been added so i'm going to come up here before i return i'm going to send a message out so i'm going to say messages dot and then i'm going to do success so i'm going to send a success message message so there are different classes of messages you can send there's there is a debug there is info there is success there is warning and then there is inf uh, error so these are just a sim very similar to the bootstrap classes and work in a very similar function uh, fashion rather so i'm going to pass in a request here i'm going to say request and then i'm going to pass in the message i want to say so i'm just going to say success success uh, successfully i'm going to say successfully uh added let's just give uppercase added 
uh, product so if a person has a new product you want to inform you that yeah, the product has been successfully added now how do we display this messages, messages to the user okay so now to display this messages to the user we have to update our template our template uh your our template file here so let's just go into our template uh our, our template and we'll go into layout dot um layout.html and in layout.html we need to make some changes for this to be able to reflect and display the message to the user so this is what they're going to do so i'm just going to scroll down and uh, scroll down until we're just above the body tag and that's when i want that's where that's where i want to keep the messages so what i'm going to do is just simply create a code block here so i'm going to create a code block So this is going to be a fork of uh, say an if statement if messages i'm going to say if messages and then you make sure that you have to you have to close that if okay so we're going to check if messages and then make sure that you uh, you end that if statement there so you have to say uh end if just like that and then in there you have to go inside of this code block and then inside of this code block you have to create the following you have to say for a message in messages so for message in messages what you want to do we want to uh, make sure that we end that for first before we continue this so just say uh, end and then for just like that so we end that for loop and then instead of this for loop for each message we want to create a div and in this div we're going to give it a, a certain class okay so we're going to give the following classes so i'm going to say here i'm going to say class I'm going to say class and the class is going to have the following it's going to have a lot and then it's going to be a lot dash and then you're going to get the class of that message which is going to be mess message tag okay now this is very similar to bootstrap as i've explained to you earlier on so it's going to be a uh, message sorry uh it has to be here it has to be a uh, message sorry message dot tag just like that message dot uh sorry i'm typing the wrong place message dot tags just like that so for each message you're going to get the message tag and i also want to keep another class here imagine top I'm going to give the margin top of four. Okay, so it's very similar to the way we do alert, alert dash info, alert dash uh, something in uh, alert the success in Bootstrap, right? So in this case, you're going to get the, the the message tags, which are going to be of type success info and other, which as as, as you have specified here, right? So that's what you're trying to do, and for that, you're going to display the message. You're going to just keep a code block and then display that message to the user. So just like that message so that's how we can uh make a messaging system in django so i'm just going to go ahead and save this and then check if my development server is running uh, yeah it is running so now we can go ahead and actually add to add an inventory so let me just say jacket let's just uh let's say shoes or something so shoes uh, cost per item let's say each shoe is 400 and then the quantity in stock we have uh, 14 stock and you are sold uh 20 so far i'm just going to go ahead and actually add this and the message should now pop up and you can see the product has been successfully added now this is what we want now we want to repeat we want to repeat the same info the same uh the same functionality for when a person deletes a product so when a person deletes a product you're going to do let's go to messages dot and then you're going to uh, for product you can just um delete a product you can just um i'm thinking of the right class to use for this uh, let me just see uh we can use uh success success is also fine but let's find a better one to use i think we can use a uh, success yeah it's a success success is fine so we're going to say uh success then you're going to pass in request here the request object and then you're going to now pass in uh we're going to pass in the message you're going to say um inventory deleted okay so i think we can also use uh uh i think there is danger i think also danger so if a person deletes a product, we just send in the danger one, same that the product has been deleted. Or you can also say success. Uh, it depends on you and what you want to do. Also for 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 the for the up, uh, updating of a product, you can also send a message to the user. Just pass this in here and then change this to be success. Just success, and then you can change the message here inventory uh, updated, just like that. So now that you have uh, the, that messaging functionality is set up and it will all also work, you can go ahead and feel comfortable to try this out. So we have fixed the errors that you wanted to fix. Now let's go into the main point of this tutorial, which is just to create the route to re to return the to return the the dashboard. Okay, to return the the data that will be used to plot the dashboard. So in this to, uh, in this for this, we'll be using Plotly. 
and also we'll be using uh, uh we'll be using we'll be using let me just show you in google we'll be using uh here we'll be using django pandas okay so first of all just go ahead and just search for uh plotly express okay so in google you can just type plotly express just like that and then search for it uh let me just keep python the, the python yeah that would be good so just click on this plotly express and that should take you the official documentation of plotly and if you don't know what plotly is plotly is just a library that is used to draw graphs and uh, other things so if you ever come from data science uh, background you probably know about plotly we have seaborn and other libraries but plotly you can use it to integrate it into web web applications and that's what you're trying to do and that's the reason why I so uh, the other uh, like the other libraries that you can use especially javascript libraries like chat js another uh, chat 3d something like that so yeah email.js so if you aren't uh, interested in chat.js we made a we build the same application using chat.js and flask flask so if you're interested go ahead and check that tutorial out but in this tutorial i want us to make learn something new that's why we'll be using plotly express so now that the plotly website has loaded we are going to go ahead and actually plot the, uh, in, try to search for the installation so as we say install which will go to getting started and from there you can find the installation link and uh, you start to install plotly express so let's just scroll down here you can see this how you install uh, plotly so i'm just going to uh, copy this let me just see let's copy this plotly express and then we can use that to install uh, plotly so we will install plotly this way i'm just going to copy this and then i'm going to go back to my terminal and in my terminal i'm going to go ahead and actually paste this close the development server for now close the development server and then i'll uh, uh, clear the terminal and then i'll paste that command over there so you're going to press enter and it's going to go ahead and actually uh, install first plotly express so once that is done we also need to install other libraries like we need to install one library called um we need to install uh, other libraries called uh, i think it's called django pandas we need to install django pandas so you can uh, read our data data uh, our models in form of the pandas data frame and by working with pandas data frame is very simple and i have a whole tutorial on getting started with pandas so if you're interested in pandas feel free to check the tutorial on pandas it, it gives you the basics to uh, to understand this tutorial in general okay so once that is done let's try to see uh if that is done so let me just check my development server uh, is actually installing so, sorry my terminal you can see that is actually going ahead there and installing that for us so as you can see here plotly is is almost is being installed and it's almost getting done so we're going to search another library called django pandas dot uh, django pandas so we're going to just search that so what this library help us to do is help us to convert our models into a pandas data frame and to work with pandas is fairly fairly very simple than running the the orm queries which is a, a bit complicated so i'm just going to use uh pandas django pandas is very simple to use so this is the official documentation you can just go and pypy.org and search for uh django pandas django pandas this way uh django pandas and then you can go and actually read the documentation so first of all let's make sure that we go we have this installed so uh hopefully uh pandas uh sorry plotly is still installing so let's just wait a bit so if you look at the official documentation we also need to install a couple of libraries before installing uh django's uh django pandas so we need to install numpy uh, which is just a numeric python library numeric python uh, numeric python library uh, that you can use for the working with numeric values arrays and stuff like that so if you've ever watched my videos in data science then uh, you're probably familiar with pandas and machine learning you're also probably familiar with pandas and if you're interested in machine learning i have a whole series on machine learning introduction to machine learning on my youtube channel so feel free to check out those videos so we also need to install um, numpy and also we need to install pandas so pandas it stands for pandas is um used to work with data frames in uh, python actually we use this in, commonly in data science data analytics and other uh, data science related fields so that we have we have to also install uh pandas before we can install django pandas because django pandas is built on top of pandas itself and has the same commands as pandas i mean the same syntax okay so now we have a django official uh, already installed. i mean so we have plotly installed so let's go ahead and actually install uh install the following so i'm going to go ahead and actually install numpy so now that we got to get numpy for us installed and then also want to install pandas okay so copy this as well and then go back to your terminal make sure you also paste that once the pandas is already numpy is already installed so let's wait for numpy to install after numpy is installed we'll go ahead and actually 
as after after numpy is installed we'll install pandas and then finally we'll install django uh django pandas okay so let's just wait for that to load up and then i'll be back shortly yeah so we already, we already have a uh, um, numpy installed so let's go ahead and actually install pandas so i'm going to paste the command right here to install pandas and i'm just going to press enter and that will install for me pandas so also what i want to want to do is also install django Django pandas. So I'm just going to copy that, and once pandas is done installing, we also go go ahead and actually install the Django pandas, and then from there we begin to create our data for the dashboard. So um, let's just wait for this to go ahead and install. So it has already gone and installed that successfully. So I'm going to paste the code to install Django pandas. So it's going to uh, uh, go ahead and actually install Django pandas for us. So that is done and all, we have all that installed. So great. So now that we have installed, we can go back to our code and then we can go uh, into our views.py. In our views.py here is where we're going to draw the graph, okay? So I'm going to call it a function called dash as uh, dashboard can okay, to call it dashboard just like that and i'm going to pass in a request here and then from here you can just write our function but now whenever i want a user to access the, this page i want the user to be logged in so let's not forget the uh, the login required decorator so i'm going to get it and i'm going to paste it over there and if you know what decorators are i have a whole series on my youtube channel talking into uh, going in the a whole series going in depth about the decorator so feel free to check out that dec uh, that tutorial out so we're going to just going to say inventories inventories i'm going to call it inventories okay it is a variable called inventories uh let's get that right inventories and it is going to be inventory yeah, inventory model dot object objects dot all so i'm going to get all the objects from our database and i'm going to create a data frame okay if again if you know the basics of pandas again check out my whole uh, my i have a whole series on the base of pandas and uh, numpy as well so uh check out that tutorial and it will give you a boost in understanding what you're trying to do here so i'm going to say read i'm going to say read underscore uh read underscore frame now we didn't even import this so let's go ahead first and then import this for this to work so we'll just go into uh, django pandas and then we import read uh, read data frame from there so we'll just say um uh, from django underscore pandas dot io import uh read underscore frame okay so we're going to import this so we can be able to read our, our models into basically our database into a da pandas data frame okay so i'm going to uh, pass it in here and you're going to pass in what you want to read so in this case we want to read our query into a, a, a django uh django data uh, data frame so we're going to pass in our inventories here so inventory inventories so you're going to pass it here just like that inventories so now that we have that done you already read our data into uh into a a pandas data frame so i'm going to go ahead and actually create the sales graph so the first graph we're going to create is going to be called the sales underscore graph the sales graph and this graph is just going to be it's just going to be a df we're going to group by okay uh group by and then you can draw any graph you want just go and check the official documentation and also check my youtube tutorial i have a, a simple tutorial on django uh, uh, pandas it teaches you all about group by and all of these uh, pandas terminologies okay and uh syntax okay so we're going to go last underscore uh, last sales which is just a column from our models so you can go back and check your models so last sales date and then you're going to group by last sales date and you're going to say comma as index i'm uh, going to say index is going to be uh syntax is going to be false and then you're going to pass in another another command so this is false make sure you get the spelling right then you're going to now sort this data so i'm going to say sort is going to be false you know you know this data is sorted so i'm going to say sort and it's going to be false and then you're going to now pass you're going to now get the cells from this data so you're going to get cells and then you're going to find the sum of the cells so sum just like that so that's what we turn to as the sum of the cells and then you're going to now plot the graph so i'm going to say cells underscore graph and this is going to be equal to and this is going to be px and now we need to import pandas uh, px plotly express so we're going to import i'm going to import plotly i'm going to import also plotly express so we're going to just give some space here from let's say import plotly just like that and also i'm going to import uh import plotly plotly dot express as px okay you're going to import plotly express as ps and also make sure that you have plotly imported and also you're going to import json so we're going to import json now this is an inbuilt python library so we don't have to install it 
so down here what they're simply going to do we're simply going to say px and the px uh px sorry that's not the it's actually px px dot and you're going to say uh line you're going to draw a line graph and in, in here what you're going to simply going to do you're going to pass in the cells uh going to pass in the source i'm going to pass in the source uh source underscore graph and then you're going to pass in the following you're going to say x is going to be the x axis is going to be um the x axis is going to be source uh source underscore graph uh dot last underscore source last last uh last is source underscore date just like that last source date and you're going to pass in the y and the y is just going to be source underscore graph dot uh source just like that and you're going to pass in a title and the title is simply going to be uh let's get that right the title is just going to be you can just say sales trend so you can say all sales trend whatever you want to call it sales uh trend just like that so we're going to name that sales we're going to pass that and we're going to say that is going to be sales trend so let's check if you have done everything right so we've just uh, we've specified a data set you're going to work with and data set is the uh, the, the data set is what you have created from the database and you're passing that data set here and then you're saying the x axis is going to be a, a certain column of that data set, which is, which is going to be the last sales date right and then you're going to say the y axis is going to be another column from that that uh that data frame which is going to be a, a source column and then uh finally we're going to now say the title and the title is just going to be so trend source trend now we need to pass this and then you're going to say source graph and this is going to be uh it's going to be json you're going to dump in this into a json json dot uh json dot dump dump s and then you're going to pass in our source graph and then you're going to pass in uh, a class a cls and this is going to be uh plotly plotly dot uh plotly dot utils you're going to get the utils dot uh plotly plotly uh json make sure this is uppercase plotly json uh encoder just like that so make sure that you have that spelling right so plotly uh json json is uppercase and then encoder so that's all we need to do and then we can pass this into a context and then return into the back end so i'm going to get pass this into a context create a context and this is going to be a simple dictionary and very source underscore graph and the source graph is going to be um uh, it's going to be source graph just like that and then you're going to create a context here as be return and you're going to render you're going to create uh i'm going to create a certain dash uh a certain uh a certain uh a template i'm going to call it dash just in a second and i'm going to return that template so i'm going to call it i'm going to pass that template in here even though we haven't created a template yet so we're going to be inventories for slash dash uh dashboard dot dot html just like that and then you're going to pass in context as the context and this is going to be equals to context that we have this context there so great so we are passing the context as the context and now we can go ahead and actually create uh and go into our templates and in here i want to create another another file called um dashboard so dash dot html great so instead of the dashboard.html, what you're going to do, you're going to do the following. First of all, you're going to inherit the existing template of a layout dot, um, layout dot HTML, and in that template, you're going to override it to include the graphs in there. So let's just uh, go in here and override that dashboard. Uh, sorry, that template. Sorry, this is going to be here. And be extends. And this can be uh, dash dash for slash layout dot HTML, just like that. So I'm going to extend that uh, layout.html template and I'm going to create a code block here. So I'm going to override that content within the code block. So it's going to be block content, so block content. And then you're going to make sure that we end that block content tag. So we're just going to go ahead and say end block, just like that. So now that we have that there, it's all that we have that there and it's all done. So let me make sure, yeah got the spelling right so now you're going to create a div here i'm going to create a div i'm going to call it maybe with a class of content uh section from our custom css class and in here you're going to have another div with the following so we're going to have row so you're going to have a div with a class of row let's add other classes you're going to have a max uh mx dash auto you're going to have justify content center so we justify 
justify hyphen uh, content center just like that so uh, justify content content center and in here what you're going to do you're going to create a simple bootstrap card so you're going to create a card a, uh, a card called uh, boost uh, called uh, so you're going to create a div with a class card and you're going to also make say margin and the margin is going to be of four you're going to create uh you're going to give it a bit of styling here i want to give it a bit of manual uh, kind of css styling so i'm going to say uh style and the style of the style is going to be with uh with uh it's going to be 90 percent so say 90 percent okay so great so now that we have that set up, what you're going to do, you're going to now create a card body. So we're going to create a div, another div called card hyphen body, just like that. And in card body, you're going to create another div called uh, dot. Uh, you're going to create a div with a uh, with an ID called uh, the ID is going to be called chat one. Okay, chat one, just like that. So great. So now that we have this, let me just uh, separate this card content from the main content. Just like this. And then keep a bit of spacing here. Since we're going to copy this and use it a couple of times. So now that we have that there, let's go ahead and actually create the CSS, the H, uh, sorry, the the JavaScript to return the script. So I'm going to now put in a certain CDN here. So I'm going to create a script here. And the script source is going to be the following. So I'm going to just copy this from my GitHub page and paste it here to avoid wasting of time. So it is going to be a plotly script, okay? So I'm just going to go into my uh, GitHub page and then copy that. Or oh, uh, let me just type it out and so that you guys can also follow along. So it's going to be a uh, HTTPS colon for two for slashes and it's going to be CDN dot uh, plotly dot plotly and just get the spelling right dot plotly. Uh, Sorry, it's actually plot and then dot li and then for a slash is going to be plotly and then hyphen uh hyphen sorry it's a hyphen and then uh we go to go into uh uh latest uh, dash min dash js so make sure i get that right so i hopefully i didn't make any errors okay so it is a uh, https colon two first slashes cdn dot plot dot li for slash plotly uh, hyphen latest mean dot js so yeah that's it then you're going to have add another script tag here you're going to call this uh script and this is just going to have a uh, it's going to be of type we're going to give it a type it's going to be uh text for slash java javascript okay just like that and inside of this uh, javascript tag this we're going to write in the following code you're going to have a, a code here with a variable and you're going to call it graph one and this graph one is going to uh, be equal to the graph that you want to get so this is going to be uh source underscore graph okay and then you're going to pass in the safe uh the safe uh, parameter so you're going to pass the uh, passing a pipe symbol and then you're going to pass in uh safe just like this yeah so this is going to allow some security for our application okay so make sure that you have that included so we're going to now plot the graph so we're going to say plotly dot plot and you're going to pass in the graph that you want to plot so the graph i'm going to call it just give it a, the, the div in which i want to plot it so i'm going to give it this id which is a div, the id of the div in which i want to plot the chart so i'm going to paste that in here and then i'm going to pass in the chart that i want to plot which is just going to be a uh, graph one graph one and then i'm going to going to pass in an empty function block here so i'm just going to pass in here just an empty function blocks so that's how we draw a certain graph so we have created a variable called graph one and you have just which refers to the graph object that you have passed in from our view so we have passed this from our view in our context you've just referred to this inside of our dash and then you're simply passing a safety the safety for security purposes and then you have just plot the graph here plotly dot uh, plot and then it's what the div in which you want to plot the graph which is this div right here which is this card and then you pass in the graph object and then an empty function block and then you can go ahead and actually save that uh, and until and this is actually i think the uh, objects right in javascript if i'm not mistaken so let's go ahead and actually start our server again and don't worry about these errors just ignore them for now let's start uh, let's start our server again and then let's make sure everything is running so python 3 manage it by and run server so let's run that and run our development server so uh, let's make sure this server starts up and we can go back to our web application and then try to check it out but before we do that we haven't even actually re referred to this view right we haven't referred to the uh, view in our URLs. so let's go to our urls and you're going to create a route here so i'm going to create another route so i'm going to call it path and it's going to be simply uh, dash 
dashboard for slash and then you're going to pass in uh do it let's import dashboard from views here so let's go ahead and actually import dashboard from here so it's going to be a dashboard and then we can actually uh make this look a bit better so let's uh, bring this here uh make this look better see and then i'm going to break this into multiple uh multiple lines okay just to make the uh, code look much better so fix that importation and then uh, yeah so now that we have that done uh, we can go ahead and actually uh thing to be here if i'm not mistaken yes so i'm saying i can go ahead and actually save this so i'm going to say dash and i'm going to do uh i'm going to pass in that dashboard function so dashboard and then i'm going to give it a name and the name is simply going to be uh, dashboard just like that and then that's all we need to do so that's all we need to do to refer to that url so let's check if our server is running yeah it is so let's go to our web application here and then we can go to for slash dashboard inventory and then for slash here we can go to uh dashboard okay so let's uh type in here dashboard and then we can just search for that and this should return to us a graph of the of the sales trend okay so it's a taking a bit of time let's check if our development server is running yeah it is but it's taking a bit of time So we have an error here since template doesn't exist so let's check where we have made an error so dashboard.html uh let's check if that templates we have named it properly so it's dashboard.html so let me just go to views and let's check if the name matches this one here so it's a dashboard inventory so actually inventory okay i made a mistake here so it's inventory and then inventory and the inventory we are looking very fine to this uh template okay so my bad so let's check if the server is running yeah it is running so let's go back and uh, refresh this so uh it says that we have a uh, an error here so it says uh, looking for an end block so it doesn't find the end block okay let me just check the code if i included the end, end block tag here so yeah i included the end block here so block content yeah i made a mistake here so i actually this is not curly braces so i'm just making sure that it's curly braces okay so my bad there sorry for that error so i hope hopefully i don't have any more errors here and this thing will work so let me just go back and then try to refresh this yeah and it works but now the graph is not being displayed so we can see the graph here so let's check where the error is it doesn't actually display any error so let's go back to our code and see where we maybe we have made an error somewhere so plotly now plotly here is capital p not cap not lowercase p so plotly dot graph and then yeah that so uh, sorry for that error again yeah so now you can see that graph it is being displayed here and this graph is totally uh, you can zoom in zoom out and then you get all this functionality of the box without having to do anything so you can see this is the sales trend as time goes on so if you have many days in the in the many days of data then the the, the graph might look very different from mine you can also download these graphs and also do other uh, you can view download and do all other functionality with the graph right so let's go going to continue back into our series and let me show you uh, how to, to draw the other graphs and then we'll be done with this tutorial series so uh, let's come here and then we'll also draw other graphs okay now you can go ahead and actually learn pandas on your own and you can draw any kind of graph that you really really want is uh, you can draw almost any kind of graph with plot because plotly is a very very big library in python so you can go and read the official documentation and you can draw almost any kind of graph that you really want so let's just draw another graph so let's just draw a uh, let's just draw one more graph here and this graph is going to be i'm uh, going to be best uh underscore performing best performing underscore product so so best performing product uh let me just go df and this is going to be uh df dot group by and you're going to group by a following what, what do you want to group by so you want to group by and then you're going to say what you want to group by. i want to group by the name of the product and then i want to uh group by the name of the product and then what i want to do i also want to find after i group by the name of the product i want to find the sum of each product and then i want to sort uh and sort values and then i'm going to sort uh sort by and then i'm going to sort by the following the for sort by the following and i'm going to sort by uh quantity quantity underscore uh sold 
just like that i'm going to sort by the quantity sold quantity of the product that has been sold and then uh, yeah so i'm going to sort by the quantity of the product sold and then i'm going to now go ahead and plot my graph so i'm going to go um, best performance okay and then i'm going to this this is going to be a px dot bar i'm going to do a bar graph and the bar graph is going to be the data is going to be the best performing product data frame so and be based uh underscore performing data frame and then i'm going to put in the following so i'm just going to break this into multiple lines and then tap that in here so tap that then here so in here what i'm going to do i'm going to have the x-axis and the x-axis is going to be best product uh best performing performing product df uh and just get that performing underscore product df for some reason i keep typing the wrong key product uh, underscore df dot and i'm going to uh, i'm going to get the index and then the y-axis is going to be uh it's going to be the best performing product again best performing best performing product df and i'm going to get the quantity underscore sold just like that and then i'm going to pass in the title and the title is going to be um I'm going to pass in the title here and the title is going to be a string and it's going to be uh best uh performing uh product just like that so i'm going to pass in best performing product here so the spelling of product right so that's all we need to do and now we can go ahead and actually convert this into a json and pass it to the back end so i'm going to say best performing product uh just like this best performing product and this is going to be uh json dot dump s and then i'm going to pass in uh the best performing product graph that we just do so it's going to be best performing product graph and then you're going to pass in the class and the class is going to be uh, as the previous class so it's going to be let's just can you just go ahead and actually copy this and paste it over there and it will also be fine so i'm going to go ahead copy this and then uh paste it it's a bit lengthy to type out so equals to and then i'm going to paste that in there so it's going to be plotly that you choose plotly encoder pl plotly json encoder watch out for the uh, for the uh casing okay so that's how we can uh, uh do that so i'm going to now going to pass this in here so i'm going to create a string uh string here so i'm going to create a string pass this in and then a value is going to be this and i can go back to my uh dashboard and in my dashboard i think i can simply do in here copy this you're going to have another another div tag here so copy this oh sorry copy this and then uh paste it here and then you can change the the, the id to be tag 2 to be chat 2 and then down here i'm just going to copy this and then change the values to be uh, graph 2 so this is going to be graph uh, 2 and then this is going to be um it's going to be best underscore performing underscore product and then and then, then also remember to change this to be graph 2 so change that also to be 2 so now that's it, that's all we need to do so make sure i'm getting the, the spelling right here so i'm going to copy it from here and then i'm going to go here and then make sure i paste it here yeah so that's all we need to do and then i'm going to make sure this is chat 2 so make sure that this uh, the id here is chat 2 okay so all these are chat uh this is chat 2 and this is graph 2 and then so this is graph 2 make sure you change that and also change the name here so now that we have that i can go ahead and save this and also remember to change this to be two okay so let me check our development server is still running so i can go here and then try to refresh this and if i refresh this as you see another graph uh, at the bottom right down here so let's just wait for that to load yeah so now that that's loaded you can see that graph also here you can also zoom in and do all the stuff that you want so yeah you can go ahead and tell you can draw endless I'm, I'm just showing you the very basics you can draw many many graphs like but you can draw a lot of graphs with plotly so the, the thing is just, we just have to think of which graph you want to draw uh learn about a bit about pandas how to format your data and then go ahead and actually draw so let's draw one more chart and then we can uh, end this series so i'm going to uh, and there i'm going to make the code available so if you are interested in drawing uh, all uh, the all the chart that i drew when i showed you my project you can go ahead and actually find out in my github page okay so uh, even if you're interested, you can learn pandas. I have a whole series on pandas on my YouTube channel. So I'm going to create a variable, variable called product, a most product in stock, and I'm going to call this going to be df.groupby. 
uh, group by and then you're going to group by uh, group by and then you're going to pass in your by uh, by and then you're going to be uh, going to we're going to group by the name of the product you're going to okay i actually here i actually made an, an error right here okay I actually made an error right here what i mean this actually i drew a different graph okay this is the most product in stock rather so uh make sure you change this to be most most product in stock so let me just change this to be most product in stock i made a bit of error there so i, I type in the wrong thing i was looking on my other screen but i type in the wrong thing so let me just change this a bit and this is going to be um yeah i made an error right there yeah, i made an error so i actually made an error right there so no uh it's actually fine i didn't actually make an error i think i'm just confusing myself i didn't actually make an error uh it's fine right there so yeah so for the most product in stock you're going to group by the name of the product and then uh we're going to now uh find the sum of each so sum and then you're going to now uh, sort the value, sort underscore value, uh, sort values, and then you're going to sort by, you're going to sort by this parameter. You're going to sort by the quantity underscore in underscore stock. Yeah, so now that we have that there, you can go ahead and actually do most underscore uh, product in stock. Uh, and this is just going to be a px we're going to do a pie chart here a pie chart and then i'm going to say uh most product in uh, and most product underscore in underscore stock most product in stock df is a data frame that you want to work with and then let me just uh indent that over there most product in stock and what you're going to pass in, you're going to pass in the name of the product names, and then the names is going to be most uh, underscore product in stock df dot uh, index, most product in stock uh, in stock index, and then you're going to, going to go ahead and actually specify the values, and then the values are going to be most uh, most product in stock, most product in stock df dot quantity quantity underscore uh in underscore stock and this is just from our, our data frame so you can refer to our data frame that's where i'm getting these values from okay so these values i'm getting it from my my data frame but index is something that comes with pandas so you don't have to worry about it okay so make sure that you don't forget the comma right there the title you can just say uh this part in a string here and then say most product in stock just like that so we have that there and so don't forget the comma right here so now that we have all that set up we can go ahead and actually uh, plot a graph and return that graph to the back end for it to our our templates to render it so it's going to copy this and then paste it in here so i'm just do the hit the wrong key so paste that in here this is going to be uh js we're going to dump into a json that uh dump s and you're going to pass in the graph here so we're going to pass in that uh, that graph and you're going to pass in the class and the class is just what you just like this one so i'm just going to copy this and then paste it right there so copy this and then replace it here so i'm going to go ahead and save that and then i'm going to now copy this and then return pass it to my uh, my copy this and then pass it in here as a string and then pass it in here as the value okay so now that we have done that we can just go back to our dashboard and then re re copy this and paste it one more times and then make sure that you change it to be three the id should be three so change this to be three and then in here we just copy this again and then we can paste it down here so paste it here and change everything here to be three so this should be graph three uh this should be three and the id the chart should also be three okay we're referring to this id right here so now let's go ahead and actually um, change the graph as well so i'm going to copy this and then i can go into dash and then i can uh, paste it here so paste it there and save make sure that you have the, the save symbols on all of them to prevent to make your application uh, more secure so now that we have that you can check if the term you can check if our, our development server is running yeah, it is so you can go back in here and then we can simply hit ref uh, refresh 
so now that there's a lot you can see we have that graph right there we have a pie chart right there so yeah that makes sense and it looks completely fine you can download it you can uh, uh actually minimize if you don't want to see some parts you can minimize uh, uh and display it and stuff like that so i want us to uh change something you see this graph there's something wrong with this graph so let's actually go back the code i think i made an error right there so it's actually this right here so let's try to compare this with my previous code i think i made an error while typing this out so we are going to group by we are going to group by the name and then we are going to sum this and then we are going to find um uh, sort values i'm going to sort the values on quantity sold and then you're going to pass in this this and this then it's called the best performing product yeah and then we pass it in here and then we simply so pass it as a context and then we pass into json and then we return the backend okay it looks completely fine uh it's just a bit uh they look all they have all the almost the same value so that's why i'm a bit confused so it has 20 this is 20 this is uh, 20 as well so let's check in the main dashboard if it's actually 20 yeah it's all 20 yeah that's why i got confused so because all the level, let's change some of them to be um uh, let's uh, let's update this and change the value to be another let's include let's change, instead of 20 let's keep that we have sold uh i don't know 40 or something i don't know so let's just update this so you can see that if the reflection also in the dashboard so let me just go into my dashboard so i'm going to go into dashboard and then uh, view that so i'm going to go dashboard click and in here guys you can see now the change has been reflected and still has more more uh quantity sold and the best profit best performing product is sneakers and the, the it so guys thanks for watching this tutorial this is the end of this tutorial now one thing you can do before leaving is select include a link for our dashboard right in our uh, link in our navigation bar so you can go into our dashboard uh, into our layout dot uh, layout dot html file and then copy one of these link tags and then paste it here and then what you're going to do simply pass in dash dashboard so but dashboard is a name that we refer to it here okay so that's the name that you're going to use in here uh in our layout.html that's the name that you're going to use in here so i just pasted that uh sorry i just um just undo that so dashboard here and then you can say here you can say uh dashboard just like that so let me just keep the dashboard uh, the dashboard uh, above the before the closing uh, before the 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 logout tag. So I'm going to save that and then go in here and then try to refresh this. And you can see our dashboard should have now appear. So if I click, it should now take me to dashboard. So I got the spelling of dashboard there wrong. So let me change that to be dashboard. Okay, dashboard. So delete that S and then put in there a D. So yeah, that should be done. And then I check it again. Refresh this. Yeah, the dashboard so if i'm in the home page and i click on dashboard it should take me to dashboard page and if i'm not logged in because uh if you go into our views we have the login required decorator so if you don't have that decorator you're not able to, if you don't uh, if you're not logged in you won't be able to access the lo uh, the dashboard so guys this is the end of the tutorial and this is how you build a simple inventory management system using django plotly html bit of javascript which you didn't, which you didn't actually write and uh, python so guys thanks for watching and if you log out uh that to mark the end of this series so thanks for watching see you in the next tutorial i don't know what i'll be building next leave comments in the comment section below in case you have any suggestions and tutorials that you want me to make so thanks for watching see you in the next one keep safe